Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I want to thank everybody for taking your time out to join us today, and I look forward to taking the next few moments of our time, spend together and go over uh, how to sell final expense and uh, primarily how to sell over the phone, utilizing our lead program. Hope we can fill in some of your questions that many of you have today. Is if you'll notice in your dialog box, I have included a handout. So if you look at your handout tab, you'll notice that there's a handout in there entitled ABC's A Final Expense Booklet. Many of the items we go over, including several scripts and outlines, are included in that booklet. First of all, my name's Bob Lockard, and you know, I'm the National Marketing Director. I've been in the business since 1990. I began my career selling Medicare supplement and final expense. I love final expense because it's such a, a great product. It's a product that our con that consumers love. It's a product consumers need. And it's an easy product to sell and earn an income for. So I hope today's webinar is beneficial to help you to begin uh, earning uh, income selling final expense as well. Now this is the commercial. I'm gonna play it quickly and then we're gonna go from there. It's not easy talking about your final expenses, but you don't want to leave that financial burden to your family. If you're 80 years or younger, protect your family now with the senior plan from Angel Care. The average funeral costs $7,000, plus any debt and medical expenses could leave your family with a lot of costly bills. For as little as a dollar a day, you can get a senior plan from Angel Care Network to help pay for funeral and other final expenses. Guaranteed policies cover you up to $25,000 with no medical exam, even with a pre-existing condition. Your rates will never increase, your benefits will never decrease, and your policy cannot be canceled. You can get approved and covered with one phone call, and you'll get a free prescription drug card as a gift just for calling in. Call it 800-555-1212. That's 800-555-1212. Okay, again, so that is one of the commercials. We have three commercials now, and of course, we'll be starting in about uh, 10 days uh, that we play on a national level. Now, let me explain the commercials and how that works because we get a lot of questions. First and foremost, it's the highest quality lead, in my opinion, that you'll ever work. It is a commercial playing on your cable networks, your dish networks, et cetera. An individual dials the 800 number that you see on the screen. That 800 number is then connected directly to our system, which we're going to cover and hand it off to you as a live transfer. There's nobody on the other end. There's nobody taking the call, nobody scrubbing the call, nobody interfering with your lead. It's coming directly to you. It's a live call. It's an individual on that line. Those of you that are on our lead program know that you can earn leads with what we call PPL. PPL is real simple, that's premium per lead. So you earn one free lead call with every $250 of PPL. And you, you can buy them and on, even when you're earning them, the charge on the portal is $45 a lead. Now our breakage is around $70 a lead. So we are co-oping quite a bit of the cost of the lead uh, for you. Now I get agents every week, obviously when you see it, that feel like that's a high cost of the lead. It is a high cost. We're the ones paying the bill. But if you break that down, and I hope you do, I want you to do a comparison. We, we have direct mail leads, which we're going to go over later. But a typical direct mail lead, if you were to go out to Target, Kramer, one of those USAA leads, whatever it is, and if you were to purchase a direct mail lead, you're gonna pay anywhere from 525 to $580 a thousand for a thousand piece mail drop. Today, in today's marketplace, we are fortunate if you get eight tenths of a point or 1% or one and a half percent is extremely high, but on average a 1% return, that's 10 leads. So if you paid 585 for a, a thousand piece mail drop, that's $58 a lead. And we all know what those lead cards are. It's the social security update. Are you aware that your only social security is only gonna pay the $255 you know, for death? It hasn't changed since the fifties, et cetera. Everyone sends the card in and then you get the typical, I didn't know you were gonna call me. I was just wanting the free book. So we all know if you take the direct mail lead out of 10 cards, you're gonna get four or five that don't wanna to talk to you at all. And then you're gonna get half of those that are uninsurable. So you're fortunate if you get a one, two, or three cells. So again, 
all in all, if you if you if you look at the numbers, this is a much higher quality lead, and your cost is much lower. Now we have put together a uh, worksheet that I hope to have out to everybody next week. One of our top selling agencies that averages six to seven out of ten sales with this with our program has put together an in depth cheat sheet to help you uh, to be able to sell more business. I'm going to go through some of those items today. It's very, very simple, though. If you follow the procedures, if you have a great attitude, and if you listen to the things we tell you, you you'll have a great return as well. Out of 10 leads, you should average three to four sales. But if you work the program the way we're going to suggest today, that sales volume should shoot up to six or seven. That doesn't mean you can't have a bad week. You can have a bad week. But with this program, if you work it properly, your income should skyrocket. Again, so PPL, you can earn leads and you can buy leads. And I highly suggest when you get started, you should fund your account, obviously, so you can get started unless you're already selling uh, so that you can earn some money to get it into your portal. Now, let's talk a little bit about the portal and our operation. The leads run on a 24-7 basis around the clock. And I get asked all the time, can we turn them off? The answer is there's no way to turn them off. The commercial runs 24-7 around the clock by the ad agency. Therefore, we have calls coming in at 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And about 25% of the calls we get come in at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Now, why is that? Well, seniors are up watching those infomercials. And when they do, they dial the phone and that call comes in. Uh, now, keep this in mind. I'm going to go over it. Those are great calls. Those are great calls. We have an overflow center. In other words, we have a call, our live ops center. They monitor the calls through the, uh, through the night, early in the morning, throughout the day. If you miss a call, if a call runs over, we call them overflow leads. We get agents that I don't understand it because we have a full-time sales department that all, all they do is run overflow leads that for some reason agents don't want. And they sell a high volume of the leads. These are great leads. It is somebody that called in the commercial, called the 800 number, and wanted information. Now, it's up to the agent to turn it into a sale. It's not a bad lead, but they're great leads. So we get those calls for you through the night, and we transfer them over to you. Now, we, when we give you the overflow lead, because it could be an hour or so old, we get that. Or it happened during the middle of the night, even though they're great leads and my full-time sales department begs for them, wants them, pleads for them. We don't charge you the full amount of the 45, but we do charge $35 for the overflow lead. Why is that? Because I still have to pay the ad agency for the call. It is a good call. If you call in complaining, if you don't want them, that's fine. We won't give them to you, but we'll take them and give them to somebody else, which means leads coming into you for your area will go to somebody else. If you don't want them, I understand. We won't force you to take them, but I'm just going to tell you, you should rethink it because they are excellent leads. Now, the lead portal. There you're able to track your leads and all your activity. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go to the portal now. And so when you log on, this is what your portal would initially look like. Uh, you will notice in your portal, first thing you'll see is an active status. We place you in active once we've received your portal sign-up form. And we have placed you in the portal. And, and so when the call comes in from the 800 number, the system looks for a couple of things. One, it looks for the state in which the call is coming for. So if it was calling for Indiana, if an Indiana call was coming in, and in this case, this agent is from Indiana, it would locate an agent that's available, that's active, and has funds in their account. So if there are positive funds in their account and they're active, the phone is going to ring directly to that agent. Once that happens, then if you notice here in the, um, you click on the lead button, all of your answered calls, connected calls, et cetera, could be voicemail calls, whatever they are, they're all stored on the portal. Now, you can go back if you were to have started many months ago every call you've ever had that's ever come through that's ever been recorded are all stored out on the portal so you never lose access to your lead now the other one if you go to the lead itself you can open it up you can see the phone numbers there you have the client's name 
and you should use your portal. So one, work your lead. Go in and enter the status of your lead here on the portal. Working your lead, you've sent documents if you've mailed it or a doc signed if it was an e-app or a voice signature is processing. Maybe you just decided it's a dead lead. So you would want to go through and work your lead. If you made a sale, put your revenue in there. And the reason is, in other words, the revenue would be your premium, your annual premium, because the portal will track it for you. You will know within a certain amount of time just how much profit, how much per lead you are earning. Keep track of your notes, what you talk to, what you said when you talked with them, when you need to follow up, et cetera. It's important to track your leads and keep, uh, keep control of your leads. I want to put this out because it's something I have learned that we're not do doing very well. And that is, if you were to take a call today, what would happen and what would most agents do if you answer the phone and every time you answer the phone, you should answer the phone the same way. First, when you answer the phone, you will hear a whisper message in your ear. In other words, you will hear a little message that says Angel Care TV call. That's letting you know you have an ad call coming in. Therefore, you should know that that is a hot lead. When you answer the phone, please, please, please do not answer the phone with hello. Uh, I, the, uh, over, the, over the weekend, I listened to several calls from agents that were struggling. And the thing that caught my attention first was the number of agents that were answering the call by simply, there would be a long delay and then you hear hello, uh, hello, or the name of their company or their name. Now listen, the people that are calling the advertisement are calling Angel Care Services. They're not calling your name. They're not calling Jim's Insurance Service. They're calling Angel Care Services. So we have taught our agents over and over and over. And I hope that we can, those of you that are on the call today, write this down. You need to answer the call Angel Care Services or this is Angel Care Services. This is Bob. May I help you? Now, listen, when you do that, pause, let them respond. Keep this in mind. These people that are calling are under a high state of anxiety. They now realize they dialed that phone number and maybe you've done this. Uh, they've, they've dialed the phone number because they were excited, because their emotions were high, because something triggered a response in them that caused them to dial that number. When they did, you answered the phone and now they are under a state of shock. They realized possibly that this is a sales call. And we all know what that's like. You know, when you go looking for a new car and you walk out on the lot and the salesman comes walking towards you and hives run up your back. Well, that's the same thing that happens on that call. So Angel Care Services, this is Bob, may I help you? You have to be upbeat, be excited. Don't say, Angel Care, this is Bob, may I help you? You need to sound excited, look excited, smile. I tell agents, look, get up and dress for success. Just because you're working from home, don't sit around in your shorts and your underwear. <laughs> uh, you need to dress for success, smile. People on the other end know if you're happy. So when they respond back, most will say something like they were calling a TV commercial. I hear too many agents immediately go, so you were calling about that final expense insurance or you were calling because they're wanting to cut through the chase. And I've also determined that we have a lot of agents that are trying to cheat the system by hanging up quickly, returning the call, thinking they won't get charged. So let me make something perfectly clear. When an individual dials the 800 number, our system records the call from the moment they dial the 800 number and our system answers. So even though you're not on the phone, they're being recorded. We hear them in the background saying the phone's ringing. I think they're looking for somebody to answer the call. We know when someone picks up the phone, hangs up the phone, and then dials back. We've cut off several agents over the last few weeks because we know they were trying to scam the system that to keep from paying for a call, we're hanging up quickly, abruptly, claiming it was a bad call, and then doing a redial. We do quality assurance calls. We do customer service callbacks. About every 30 to 60 days, we call every lead that's ever come in the door. We do a quality assurance call to make sure that they were taken care of properly through angel care. When we determine that we have an agent doing that, we're not gonna make an issue out of it. We will just simply remove them from the system. So when you get that though, there are times that you lose a call. We all know that because we've had it happen to us. So Angel Care Services, this is Bob, may I help you? Now, when they respond, the first thing you need to do is, oh, great, well, thank you for calling. Listen, in case we get hung up, can I get your name, please? And get their first and last name, and may I get a callback number in case this call gets dropped? 
Now that means you have their number, you have their name. You are now talking to a live, living, breathing individual on that phone. They have a need because everybody I've ever met in this life is going to die at some point. Everybody I've met in this life that dies has to be buried or cremated. Now, I would just simply state to them, they ask, do you have your burial taken care of? Go to your lead portal that we were just in. And remember, put your notes down. The individual called said X, Y, Z, whatever it was they said. And then if you look on the screen, use the calendar. Click on your calendar button. Now, it'll take a while to pop up here because I'm in a hotel this morning. Have some slow connections. So there you can see, you can come to the day. So if I was calling today, I would simply click on that day and create a new task or create a new event, meaning I need to call them back. Call that lead back. Call them back 30 days from now. Every 30 to 90 days, what would I do when I call them back? Well, I would simply call them back. Hey, Mr. Smith, this is Bob Locker with Angel Care. We spoke about 30 days ago, give them the date. You had called in interested on a burial plan to take care of you or your family. I was just touching base with you to make sure you got that taken care of properly. Is there, is there anything I can now? When you call back, be upbeat. I'm calling back to follow up. I spoke to you on X date. You were interested in getting a barrel plan in place. I wanted to make sure that was moving along uh, properly and follow up with your call. Turn it into a sell. Don't quit calling that individual until they tell you to. Call them every 30 to 90 days. Don't call them every day or every week. They're going to get mad and hang up on you. So I hope you understand that lead is a good lead. It's a great lead. Follow up with the lead. Now, when you're in your portal, Again, here are all of your recorded calls. As you can see, you can click the play button and play back the call. You can look at every single transaction you've had that's been a billable call. They're all listed here. As you can see, it's got the lead number on it. If you contact us, if you think something was wrong, please don't send us individual emails. Please don't call. We get hundreds of emails, hundreds of calls. We don't want to miss it. So use the contact us now button. If you use the contact us now, as you can see, it's going to list your name, your email, and your questions. So if I was in this agent and I was seeking somebody to look at this lead, let's say right here, I'm going to take that lead number, 148909. I would just simply put a contact us now and please review or refund and put down that number and the reason why. It's that simple. Uh, use the contact us now button. That way our staff all has copies of that uh, request that has come in. And we're more likely to be able to take care of you in a fast, a quicker fashion than that. The other is if you're going to be gone for 72 hours or more, three days or more, not one day, not two days, but three days or more, notify us on the contact us now button to shut down your site. Now, you're going to need to remember to call us back or we won't turn your site back on and you still won't be getting leads. But if you're going to be gone for at least three days, tell us, ask us to shut down your site. Use the contact us now button to do so. Leads come in over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. I know some of you don't work over the weekend. Some of you don't like to. I can tell you there's a high volume of leads that come in over the weekend. So if you want to make some money, work on the weekend. If you don't, our Live Ops Center is taking the calls over the weekend. We'll record the lead and send it to you. Now, I hope that if many of you already work in the program have already discovered the following. If you haven't, let me make this clear. Every time you get a lead call, every time you get a billable lead call or a lead call, even a Live Ops call, you will also get an email triggered through your portal system. The portal will send you a copy of that lead by way of email. That's just a, another safeguard to be sure that you get a copy of everything that you're working on. Now, if you need money, you want to add money to your uh, system, it's real simple. Hit the Add Funds button, then you will hit. You will notice that all lead purchases are non-refundable, and that's simply because we have to prepay for all of your leads, and we can't get a refund. Hit the Authorize.net button, and then go in here and select the amount of money that you'd like to add to your um, to your portal. It's that simple. Fill it out, click su submit, and it's going to come back and, and um, populate your portal. So that's our portal and pretty much how it works. You can go in, look at it. You can't hurt it. Uh, go in and play around once you get it. Now, I've already covered the live ops, how it works. Uh, 
the PPL. So as of January 9th, we dropped our PPL. So one lead for every $250 of PPL. So let's go over uh, refunds briefly, and then we're going to get into some sales tactics. Most calls are non-refundable. Again, if it connects, if you talk to them, we get billed. However, I do consider refunds, but do it on the contact us now button and state a reason why. We then submit that reason for the refund that you're asking for to the ad agency whereby where we purchase the leads. It takes them seven to 10 days to respond. Once we get a response back, we will post the funds to your account if, it was, if, if we got a refund. If we didn't get a refund, we won't post the funds and we'll let you know why. So again, it's just that simple. I would tell you the only calls that really works when we can prove it was a genuine accidental bogus call. Sometimes people dial the wrong 800 number looking for a different company. We have it recorded. We can hear it. We do follow up. We call back the client, et cetera. And once we're able to prove that it was an accidental call, a bogus call, a little kid playing on the phone, most of the time we are successful in getting those refunds. But those are the only reasons that are considered. We do have a, a Hispanic commercial ready to be launched. So if you are are fluent in Spanish and you would like to help uh, work the Spanish market, please send me an email. Let me know what state you're in. The states whereby we will be running the commercial is Florida, Texas, California, and Puerto Rico. Obviously, you have to be licensed and appointed in those states, and you do need to be totally affluent in Spanish. Okay, now let's get into this. Let's talk about the, the call itself as we go through it. Again, I included for you today on your handouts page, the ABC is a final expense. There are scripts in there, everything that you need to learn on how to work the system. But I'm gonna go through and give you some tips now. I know I do this every time. I apologize if it's old news, but I just think I can't over uh, emphasize this enough. The first thing you need to do to be successful is be prepared. Speak loud, speak clearly. On your monitors, on one page, you wanna have your code engine up. On the other page, have your e-app up. Have your worksheet available. Uh, get the worksheet for AmeriCo or American Home Life. The worksheets are located on their website. We have them. If you haven't already received them, we can get them to you. Your marketer can get them to you. It's just a short form application so that you can pre-qualify your client before you call the carrier and do a voice signature. Now with that, I wanna give you a good bit of news. As you know, AmeriCo has been our primary carrier. It's the carrier I recommend the most. It's a quality product, has a living benefit. You only pay a smoker rate if you smoke cigarettes. So pipe, chewing tobacco, cigars are non considered non-smokers. But AmeriCo got a little conservative over the last year and their issue rate fell. They have made an adjustment as of three weeks ago they have now increased their issue rate over 12%. So they are now hovering over right around about 84% of applications coming in the door are being approved as standard issue. That means more commission for you. The applicant is approved while you're on the phone. Their policy is put in place while you're on the phone and your commissions are generated in 24 hours. Take a hard look at AmeriCo. They've decided to jump back into the business and they want more business and they've made it easier for you to do so. AmeriCo and American Home Life are the two products I recommend the most. AmeriCo first, but if you do know that it's a product that AmeriCo won't accept, many times American Home Life's underwriting requirements are lesser uh, stringent than AmeriCo, and you're able to place it there. They're both voice signature applications. No EAP involved, nothing needs to be filled out, you simply three-way call with the carrier, let them complete the application of signature on the phone, and your policy is done. So let's go back to the call. So we had a call that came in, I was the agent. It would go something like this. Good morning, Angel Care Services. This is Bob, may I help you? The client or the prospect is then going to respond. And I would say, thank you for calling very much. We appreciate your call. In case this call gets cut off, may I please get your name? And I would take their name and a good callback number in case we get cut off and I would record the call. So I want that name, I want that phone number. Now keep in mind, write it down, but that call's being recorded. So if you, if you forget the person's name, if you forget the phone number, it's on your portal. It's on the portal for you, you have it right there. So 
once I get that name and stuff, I want to keep the call going, but, but build some rapport. Treat this cell like it is if you were face to face. You know they're from the state of X because you, you they just called with the phone number. You can ask, and may I make sure what state are you from? And they can tell you if you know anything about the state. Build some rapport. Joke with them a little bit. Break the ice. Remember, there's a high state of anxiety going on, but you don't have a lot of time. This is a phone call. You're not at the door. So you need to move the process along. And the way I do that is simple. I, I go ahead and set up the call. So, well, thank you again, Mr. Jones, for calling. May I ask? Have you already decided upon the type of funeral you're going to have? Now, many will respond. If they haven't, would it be a traditional funeral like the, at the funeral home and the cemetery, or are you considering cremation? Let them answer. There's no wrong answer. Compliment them on their choice, and then you would move to the second area. Once they tell you that, let them talk. May I ask, have you decided upon an amount that you will need? Now, this is a question that will you'll get varied response. Many have not decided at all, and many will say, I don't know, I can probably, I can probably afford 40 or $50 a month. Now, that's not what you're asking, but it is what you wanted to know. But what you were asking was face amount. So regardless of what the, the uh, response is, listen, because this is the most important. So if they were saying something like, well, I think what they said there on the TV, I guess that 30000 well, well, that's a great choice, Mr. Jones. Let me suggest that the, the average the average cost of a funeral is about $8,000. Now, obviously, we can get a $30,000 barrel for you. However, I just want you to know that's going to be quite expensive. So this is where you would get into the budget. Find out what they can afford. Let them know up front. There's no sense going through an underwriting process, getting through an application for a $30,000 or a $25,000 whole life policy, that's going to run them $250, $300 a month to have them say, whoa, that's more than I thought. Find out up front. Get it on the table. I would let them know that the, based upon their age, obviously, I would let them know that the average funeral is about $8,000, which is going to run about X dollars to do so. You might as well get it out on the table. Get it over with. You don't want to spend all this time on the phone only to be told later they can't afford it. So you would go to that if they said cremation, then you would tell them the average cost of the cremation is about $1,500. I suggest that we, we look at about $3,000. And the reason for that is inflation, et cetera. We don't know what the cost is going to be 10, 15 years from now. And so you would want to get that on the table. And then once that you get an agreement, it's simple. You have to keep the process flowing. Well, great, Mr. Jones. Let me explain the process to you what, how it works. The first thing I need to do is see what type of plan you qualify for. And don't hesitate. Go through, take your worksheet, and begin to ask the questions on the worksheet. Don't start with Social Security number. That's not going to work. <laughs> You're going to health questions. You're going to qualify them. To make, now, people like to qualify. So when you go through, you're going to pre-qualify your client to make sure they qualify to go with the AmeriCo application. Once they do, you need to be excited. Great news, Mr. Jones. You qualify for our best plan and talk to them about that plan. Let them know the benefits of AmeriCo. Go through the plan. Learn your plans, folks. If you're in a state where a plan doesn't exist and you have to do another care, foresters, well neighbors, we have a host of care. Learn the plan. Find out what the highlights are of the plan. Sell the sizzle of the plan. Now, let me explain the rest of the process. What we need to do is the following. First, may I ask, how would you normally pay for this, monthly or annual? Don't give them quarterly or semi-annual. Now, we all know, if I were to ask that call live and you heard the client on the other end, 90-some percent are going to say what? Well, monthly. Well, that's what most people choose. Mr. Jones, the, the way that works is similar to your Social Security. Now, if they're on Social Security, the way that works is like your Social Security check. You know how every month your check is automatically deposited in the bank? That way, if you're out of town, if you're on a trip, if you're out of the country, if you're sick, unfortunately, if you're in a nursing home because those things happen, uh, you don't have to worry about missing your check because it's going to automatically deposit. Your burial policy is set up in much the same fashion. You pick the day you uh, uh, of the month, and your payment will automatically come out each, each uh, month based upon the date you provide. That way, like I said, God forbid it happens, but as we get older, these things do happen. We end up in the hospital. We end up in a nursing home. We don't want the payment to lapse on our barrel policy before it's paid off. We want to be sure. 
that is there when you need it, when your family needs it most. So you get an agreement, then get the name of their bank, get their routing number, get their account number. Now, this is the biggest pushback, but sell the sizzle again. Remember, this is to protect them in the event that they're in a hospital, they're in a nursing home, they're sick, they're out of the country, they don't want to miss their payment. Once you get that information, now let them know the next thing we need to do is we're going to call the company that's going to take care of your burial plan. Now, I hope you realize through my whole conversation, I've never used the word insurance. It's plan. It's burial. That's what they are. They're final expense. They've, they've caught on by now, but folks, those are, those are words that bring up controversy. Those are words that people don't like to hear. I stay away from them. Don't use the word premium. It's payment. It's plan. It's burial. It's policy. So please keep that in mind. First thing we're going to do is get on the phone with the, with the company that's going to take care of your bill plan. They're going to ask you some questions. Now, what they're going to do is ask you the same things I did. Here's where you can lose a cell if you don't follow what I tell you. And that is, Mr. Jones, I want you to know that, first of all, this plan is not going to be like me. It's going to be a little boring call. The people on the other end are usually very dry, very to the point. And I need you to do me a favor. I want you to be as honest as you can, and I know you will be when you answer the questions. But please don't offer anything they don't ask. So you've gone through the questions I asked you earlier, and I know you were honest with me. Uh, so let's review again. Uh, what type of prescriptions did you say you take? If they told you earlier you didn't, you want to say that. You want that question again. Have your prescription drug guide out. Americal has the best prescription drug guide in the industry. Look up their prescriptions. Look it up in the guide. Make sure it's a drug that's approved. If you have a bunch of prescriptions, you can't really figure it out, you don't know, I would recommend you go to American Home Life, which will be a whole lot more um, viable opportunity for you to place it if there's a whole bunch of prescriptions that you just can't figure out. But if they do pass and it's on there, you want to make sure, just let them know. Now, they're going to ask you the same questions about your health, about your prescriptions. Answer yes or no. You don't need to go into a bunch of detail. Don't talk about your kids from 20 years ago, your next door neighbor, your dog down the street. Just answer the questions. You don't need to offer anything else. Be sure they understand that. You want them to answer honestly. Don't tell them what to say. But you don't want them to go into detail and start offering a bunch of stuff that's not necessary. Why? Because that underwriter on the phone is a human being. It may not be on the question, but now it is. Because they offered it 21 years ago. They had a heart attack. They got hit by a car. They lost a toe in a snowstorm. They got frostbit. Their mother had it. Their grandmother had it. You get the drift. You don't want that. Set up the call. Then make the three-way call. When you make the three-way call, each care has requirements. You need to read their requirements. It's in the agent guide. Americo has it. American Home Life has it. Foresters, Royal Neighbors, they all have an agent guide that tells you what they want. Typically up front, they want your name, your number, the name of the client, where they're from, the policy that you're asking them to place. Have the EFT information available, the name of the bank, the account number, the date the policy will put in place. You provide that information. If you forget to get that and they ask the client, the client's going to, they're, they're just going to swell up on the phone. They're going to dummy up on the phone and change their mind. Get that up front. And then pass the call to your prospect and the underwriter will take over. They're going to ask the questions and then they're going to let you know that the policy has been approved. You need to be excited. The, poly, the underwriter is going to then hang up. Let them know, Mrs. Jones, congratulations. Uh, your policy, I want you to know, is actually in effect right now. What that means is, God forbid, something happens in the next hour, your family's covered. Your burial is taken care of. Now, now, listen to what I'm about to say. Your persistency will be terrible if you don't follow what I'm about to say. You're not done. Now you need to set up a follow-up call. Set that call up for four to five days down the road. Let them know the policy is going to be mailed in the next 48 hours. You set up a call. Why is that? You need to build your credibility now. Remember, you're on the phone and everybody's told them, don't you ever buy anything over the phone. Don't talk to anybody over the phone. Don't give out your phone number. Don't give out your social security number. Don't get, and they just did all of that. Their kids are going to get upset. Their neighbors down at the senior center is going to tell them they were crazy. Let them know that you know that. Make sure they have your name, your phone number. If they have email, send them your business card. Go out today. 
get you some thank you cards. And please, as soon as you hang up the phone, make out a thank you card that evening, go down to the post office, drop it in the mail. Why? It's going to get to them in a couple days. It'll get there before the policy gets there. It's very important. It's old school, something we used to do and they just don't do it anymore. It's only going to cost you 50, 60 cents. Drop it in the mail, please. And don't do all email. I know it's faster. I know it's cheaper, but not, you know, only about 10% of the people open up emails. So keep that in mind. Drop that thank you card, set that appointment, and then let them know. Now, Mr. Mr. Jones, I've got a set for Friday at 10 o'clock, whatever your time was you scheduled. I'm going to call you back. When we do that, we're going to go over your plan on the phone. We're going to make sure you got exactly what you wanted. Make sure it's exactly what we asked for and that there's no mistakes. Now, you have to remember to make that call. If you don't make that call, you lose. And then let them know if, if it comes in the mail before the date you set, please call me. Let me know so we can go over that plan, Mr. Jones. It's important for me to get back with you. I want to make sure we get exactly what we asked for, okay? Now, listen, folks, I'm telling you right now, if you don't want to keep your policy, don't do what I just asked. You need to follow up, follow up, follow up. After it's been delivered, after you go over it, after you review it with them, you need to call them back in a couple of weeks to make sure everything's okay. Call them back then in 90 days, make sure they're good. You need to put it on your schedule to touch base with them three to four times the first year. Get referrals. In other words, that's your policy holder. Don't treat them like a telemarketer. Now, I hope that helped today. We are, we're running short on time. I don't want to run you over the allotted time we scheduled. I want to thank everybody again for joining us on today's call. I hope you all have a wonderful week and a wonderful weekend and have a good day. Thank you.